Today I'm out near Detroit taking a look at the all new seventh generation Ford Mustang and contrary to a lot of people's fears, the Mustang has not been diluted. This is still rear wheel drive only. There's still a big V8 engine under the hood and yes, even still a manual transmission. No electric options, no hybrid options, no all wheel drive, just pure pony fun. From the outside, this is instantly recognizable as a Mustang, and it's cleaner and sharper in terms of design than the outgoing model. There is still a base version and a GT, just as you'd expect. The GT is easily identifiable by the different front grille. It has these nostrils on the outside. That's what the design team was referring to them as, and of course the egg crate grille right there inside. The bumper is also unique. Rather than simply a grille insert, they do change the bumper design for the GT as well. We have these large cooling ducts on either side. This one's the only one that's actually functional. The one on the other side is blocked off because it's right in front of the windshield washer reservoir, and this one actually has a cooler right there behind it. We have slimmer LED headlights than before. These are definitely more attractive than the outgoing Mustang, and it retains the sequential turn signals that you've come to expect from this model. It also has a really strong brow up here where the hood and this front fender and the bumper module, they overhang the headlight, giving it a really clean and distinctive look. The other way to differentiate this from the base version is this hood louver on top that is fully functional. Fortunately, Ford has let us start up the Mustang so we can hear that V8 rumble and of course see the full LED headlights and the progressive turn signals. That's a really cool touch and I love how slim they are and again this really accentuated brow feature. I also like the fact that we don't just have boring black plastic around the vehicle on the outside or on the inside. They've given all these black plastic sections some extra texture. I don't know how easy that is going to be to clean. Lots of Easter eggs all the way around, like Mustang logos in the headlight modules, Mustang logos on the Brembo brakes as well. Now this is the GT, so we have staggered tires, 255 up front, 275 in the rear. When you look at this, as you approach it, it feels like it's lower, longer, and wider than the outgoing model, but dimensionally, it's almost exactly the same. The Ford engineers have said this is within millimeters of the current generation Mustang. That would be the sixth generation, this being the seventh. From the side profile, you'll instantly notice these really aggressive haunches in the rear and this very aggressive style line that has a kink that runs right through the driver and passenger door, zips up right here, and then up and over the rear tires. The rear tires are 275 width on the GT model, 255 width symmetrical tires if you get the 2.3 liter turbo. Now, moving back here to the rear, if you'll fill the door right there, more of this black plastic with texture. If you come in really close, you can see these lines right here in this plastic section. I really, really dig this. Again, I wonder how easy it is going to be to clean, but I love the way they've styled that. Quad exhaust tips on the 5 liter V8 model, dual exhaust tips on the 2.3 liter model. And then moving out to the rest of the bumper, you can see that we, of course, still have the progressive turn signals that the Mustang has been known for for quite some time. And kind of an unusual style here, they have this sort of chop line right here through the trunk lid. This gives me a little bit of a Hyundai Elantra vibe, to be honest, where the trunk lid comes in, digs in right there with sort of a karate chop, and then comes back out lower. The GT has an optional spoiler on top. I think it looks a little bit better without the spoiler, personally big GT logo right back there. This one has the performance pack, so it says performance inside the GT logo. Another one of the Easter eggs present is this line of Mustangs right here in the rear glass, seven for the seven generations of Mustang. And with this little diagram here, you can actually see the progression of the shape and the styling of the Mustang over the years. But I think this is by far the coolest looking Mustang so far. I know classic Mustang fans will probably disagree with me there, but I think this looks fantastic inside and out. Because this is an extremely early pre-production prototype, I can't show you what's under the hood, but I know what's gonna live under there. We're gonna get a fourth generation version of the 2.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. We don't have official power figures just yet, but Ford says it's gonna be more powerful and more efficient than the outgoing engine. It's gonna be mated probably only to the 10 speed automatic transmission, but some details are a little sketchy. It might get a manual transmission if you're very lucky. That engine is likely gonna produce well over 300 horsepower. Then of course, there is this five liter V8, a fourth generation of the Coyote five liter V8. This one now features dual throttle bodies, which really gives it a cool look under the hood. If you're the kind of person that loves propping open your hood and showing it off, this really shows well because of that dual intake manifold and then the way they've redone some of the plumbing on the top of the engine. Again, no specifications for this engine just yet. And hopefully on your screen, you're gonna be seeing some photos of the new engine. If not, you're gonna be seeing photos of the outgoing model. 
I expect this is probably going to be in the neighborhood of 350 to 380 horsepower, somewhere in that range. They're promising that this is going to be the most powerful Mustang GT ever built. Now that does not mean that it's the most powerful Mustang ever built because logically there's going to be a GT something else coming later, GT 500, 750s, whatever number Ford picks. Obviously there's going to be more power on tap if you want it. Manual fans rejoice because the 5 liter V8 can be paired not just with the 10 speed automatic transmission, but for sure with the 6 speed manual transmission as well. And purists also rejoice because rear wheel drive is the only option. There had been some rumors that perhaps the Mustang would get all wheel drive and maybe a hybrid setup, but we don't even find a mild hybrid on this Mustang. Although I don't know too many details about the engine, they have allowed us to start it. Let's see what it sounds like. Yep, if you were worried about a V8 not happening in your next sports car, fear not, Ford is dedicated to the V8 portfolio. And cool active exhaust here. This exhaust tip on the inside, I'm getting them wrong, this one on the inside, this is the active exhaust. It has a little valve inside, so it's normally closed. And then this one on the outside, it's always open. Now let's go around the interior because this is where the biggest changes happen in the Mustang. And don't worry, there is still a Mustang convertible available. I was able to look at it, but unfortunately not able to film it. We have greatly improved interior components in here. That's the biggest thing you're going to notice is the parts quality is greatly improved. Up here we have the SOS button, map lights, a sunglass holder right there. And then moving down there, you'll see the new door panels. Lots more premium materials going on in this interior. And again, more of those more interesting textures in these printed plastic parts. As I understand it, these are apparently laser cut after they're printed. And uh, you can really see the improvement in materials quality. This reminds me a lot of the Mustang Mach-E combined with a few other recent Ford products. Lots more soft touch materials and stitch materials on the doors and on the dashboard. Moving over to the dashboard, some folks might be sad that this loses the double binnacle style that we found in the previous Mustangs, but honestly, I don't miss it at all. I think this is cleaner, modern, and simply more attractive. We have soft touch materials up here on the top of the dashboard. Again, more of that textured plastic going on right here. This reminds me a lot of the Mach-E. It's sort of helped preview some of the styling elements in here, but not all of the styling elements. This is not simply a two-door Mach-E, which some people were afraid of. Down here, we have some stitched elements. These are gonna be found on every version of the Mustang, including the base model. Pretty decently sized glove compartment right below that. And then this model has the available Recaro seats. You can see the Recaro logo right there. This is not a five-point harness seat, although it is styled like that. If you really wanna use five-point harnesses, you're gonna to have to do that yourself. These Recaro seats definitely seem to be more comfortable than the ones used in the previous generation Mustang. As you can see, lots of perforations right there on the seats, because if I go over here into the infotainment cluster, you can see these seats are both heated and ventilated, even though they're the Recaros. Going across the dashboard, we find the big change in here, and that is that most versions of the Mustang are gonna have this enormous two-screen setup in the dashboard. They are arranged as one piece, but you can see that there's a blank section right there in the middle where we don't have a screen. This is not a curved screen setup. Instead, we just have a kink right here and then two flat screens on either side of the kink. This one is just over 13 inches. The instrument cluster is well over 12 inches. These are really, really big LCDs. Now, Ford is still calling this software Sync 4, which surprised me because this looks quite different than the Sync 4 that we find in pretty much everything else in the lineup. It is considerably faster, considerably more adjustable. There are tons of different screens available, including a retro LCD layout for the instrument cluster over here that replicates what we saw in the Fox body Mustang. I think that's a really great touch. Also some very modern digital screens as well. I'll roll through those in a bit just as soon as I can. We have two big air vents down here, more of that textured plastic, a reduced button set up down here at the bottom. So we have the auto start stop button, a button to take you over to a shortcut screen where you can see the My, uh, My Mustang options right there. Tons of different adjustable features in here. Uh, in here, we can choose to match the drive mode. Uh, we can go for a normal mode. Let's take a look through these different layouts here. This is the normal screen. This is the sport layout. This is the track layout. Again, tons of different options here. There's a calm layout if you're just motoring down the road. And then the Fox body retro layout, which I think is particularly cool. Also on this page, we have track apps, auxiliary gauges, and you can control the active exhaust mode. Lots of cool options there. 
And then down here we have some additional buttons, favorite button, things like that. These are a combination of physical button module and touch button. So this entire module moves and then it knows what you've done by how you've touched it. One thing that I thought weird in here, we have the same old USB module down here that we find in the previous generation Mustang and a lot of Ford products. I think that could have been better done, but we do have a wireless charging mat right down there, a little small storage cubby there. And then of course a real manual transmission just behind that. This looks like it's a regular parking brake, but it's actually an electronic parking brake. Here's how it works. You pull up to engage the parking brake, and then with your foot on the brake pedal, you just drive away. Ford says the reason they went this direction rather than a little electronic switch is obviously some, for some heritage reasons, but also because this is used for the new drift mode in the Mustang. So that way you can just quickly flick it up. It will automatically engage the brake to help you drift the vehicle a little bit better. We then have two large cup holders here and then a very small storage space right behind that, just as you'd expect. Now in this model, it has the premium interior bits. So this is a soft touch material. And then we have the stitched components and then the bolsters right there along that center or tunnel that are padded. If you don't get this interior option, then you get harder plastics right in the center console, but we still have the stitched materials and this soft plastic running across the dashboard as well as that soft touch upper trim. Moving over to the steering wheel, we have simply the best steering wheel I think the Mustang has ever had mainly because the rim is thicker and then we have these thumb grips up top which really make this a very comfortable design. It's also pretty attractive. Instead of having button modules that are hanging on lower on the steering wheel, they've put everything right up front. It can be a little bit busy, but I think you'll get used to the way the controls function. These controls control that multifunction LCD cluster. We then have volume up down and then this button allows you to change the steering feel on the fly. Over here we have drive mode toggles. This display is saying drive mode's not available because this is a very early pre-production vehicle. It's battery's gone dead multiple times today, so a few things are a little bit funny. Over here, we also have the buttons for the adaptive cruise control system and speed limiter function. This vehicle has a manual transmission, but we still have adaptive cruise control, which is a really nice touch. Then over here, we have the familiar Ford headlight controls. The true hallmark for any Mustang is it must have a small but practical back seat. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm sitting in a position that I probably would do if I was driving. I could move the seat a little bit closer and still be moderately comfortable. So that way I could get back there into the back seat. Let's see how that goes. As you can see, things back here are a little bit tight. Legroom is pretty reasonable, however. It's headroom, really, that's pretty limited. My head is just under that glass. But this is definitely the kind of place you could put kids if you needed to. There are even latch anchors back here, and importantly, the rear seats fold down to give you a trunk pass-through. This is a 50-50 folding design because this is a four seat vehicle only. So no seat right here in the middle, obviously. This is not quite as practical as far as the back seat goes versus something big like a Challenger, but this is an awful lot more fun. And the other thing I noticed back here is that parts quality definitely appears to have improved a little, although still plenty of hard plastics going on back here because obviously this is not gonna be the kind of place you wanna spend eight or nine hours. With dimensions that are pretty similar to the outgoing model, logically cargo area is gonna be pretty similar to the outgoing model as well. I don't have any numbers, but looking back here, it looks like you could probably fit four or three 24 inch roller bags, something along those lines that put the car cover back here and the floor mats, things like that. We also have a subwoofer over there on that side. This is a pretty reasonably sized trunk opening for a coupe like this, but it is still a trunk opening. So this is not a lift back like you might find in some of the competition. Competition for the Mustang, that's pretty interesting and a little bit hard to define in today's world because we aren't going to have a Challenger that's gonna be a direct competitor to this. We still have the Camaro and we have something like a Nissan Z or a Toyota Supra, but those two options don't have a back seat at all. So even though this back seat's pretty tight, it is infinitely bigger than the lack of a back seat we find in the Nissan or the Toyota. And perhaps more importantly, there's also a convertible version of the Mustang. I'm really sad that I could not share the convertible version with you because they had one earlier that we were able to look at. It looked gorgeous with the top down. It's gonna be available as a rag top only, no hard top. And the top is always going to be black, regardless of the exterior color choice. And you can get the convertible in GT or the regular 2.3 liter turbo with all of the options or not that you see in this particular model, including the performance pack. So Ford has decided to make all of the options available on essentially every version of the Mustang, something else that I really appreciate. There is no convertible version of the Z. There is no convertible version of even the Challenger that's made by the factory. You can have one converted, of course, but this is going to be a lot less expensive and designed to be a convertible right from the factory. 
if I were shopping for a Mustang GT, I have to say I would probably go for that ultimate, uh, you know, Hollywood Boulevard style one with the rag top. Let me know what you would pick down there in the comment section. Bottom line, Ford has a real winner on their hands with the new Mustang as long as pricing is under control. And that is the one thing we have no idea about yet, just yet. So Ford has not said anything, even pricing guidance. I expect it's obviously gonna be more expensive than the outgoing model. How much more expensive? I'm just not sure yet. They have, however, said that this is gonna be on sale sometime around fall or summer next year. So if you want a Mustang, you're gonna to have to go down to your dealer and let them know that you wanna order one as soon as possible. They have said that there is not going to be a pre-order style process like we've seen with the Bronco and the Bronco Sport and the Mustang Mach-E, et cetera. Instead, it's gonna be more of a traditional dealer order process. You go to the dealer, the dealer puts the order in, your Mustang will roll out. That's likely because production volume and production ability of the Mustang is simply higher than some of those special line products that we've seen from Ford recently. Uh, they're gonna be able to build just about as many of these as people want, so don't expect too much of a rush as far as availability initially but definitely expect this to be one of the best options in this segment. If you're looking for an affordable performance vehicle, you should absolutely have this on your shopping list. And of course, stay tuned because I'm gonna be driving this just as soon as possible. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Find me over at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those other social places. And of course, stay tuned for the full video where I get to take this out on the road just as soon as I can.